Hello everyone, my name is Joe Scorstone, channel is called Ethernet Wink, and today's video is going to be day 9 of the uh, Quant Finance Advent of Code that I'm doing. I hope that you guys have been enjoying this series. The last episode was the last one about options, so if you're interested in that, you could always go back and check those out. Uh, this video is the first one for the kind of data structures aspect of it. I have a different video on my channel where I did a rolling window as a tree because it's a bit more efficient than a list. And this one is going to be an async cache, so that way we could store um, store data we don't want to download twice if we don't need to. And we're going to be modifying our get data function for that that we've been building on in the other videos. So we're going to hop right into that. Thank you guys for all the support on my socials. If you guys want to follow me on this, you guys can see uh, updates as soon as they come out and when I go on spaces with those awesome, awesome people. If you guys also like to trade actively, I have an indicator with Luxalgo. Uh, you guys could subscribe to this and put on your trading view charts if you want to enhance your trading a bit with that. Let's hop right into this code though. So let's check out our task. First task, for this task, create an object, a cache, that will store data with the key value pair asynchronously. Add a task that will remove the data after a, uh, remove the data after a specified amount of time for future use cases. Modify the get data function to try and access the cache first. If it cannot, then get the data and cache it. Print the data along with how long it took each task took, API connection, read CSV, or cache it. Sweet. Awesome. Okay. So we're going to get it started here. So we're going to have this class that's going to be our cache. And in our initialize function, we only need um, two parameters. We just need seconds to expiry and an interval. So we're going to get it started right here. So we're going to uh, make our first variable will be a be a cache and that's just going to be a dictionary next we're going to set our second still expiry to be the parameter like the local variable to be the parameter and we're also going to do that for the uh, interval then we're going to need an async uh, io we're going to need to create a task so i'm going to create a task and i'm going to call the function self.cleanup so just so that way I don't forget to do that, I'm just going to put the function uh, in there, in the init. All right, so now we can just start having this behave like a regular um, a regular dictionary. So we're going to say set key value. So we're going to need a, uh, we're going to need self and we're going to need a key and we're going to need a value. All right, this is, um, this is just simply, this is data structures 101 here, just using a dictionary. So we're going to say self.cache key gets value gets a value that's in a list so we're going to say a value has a list and it has time dot time that is because we want to have these things expire if we don't need them anymore or if it's been too long to kind of um kind of help out the efficiency so we have to store them as a list like that. You can store it as a tuple. You can store it as another dictionary. And just in my mind, I defaulted the list. So that's what we're going to do. So now we're going to say, um, now we need a function to get key value, key value pairs. So we're going to say self, and we're just going to need a key. We don't actually need the um, key value pairs. So we're going to say, uh, uh, bleh. we're going to say, if we have a key in the cache, then we can actually access it. If key um, in self.cache then we could actually access it. So that value is going to be self.cache value, excuse me, self.cache key, and those values are going to hold um, the actual value of the variable and what time it was put in there. So if the current time minus the time that the, um, that the value was inputted into the, damn it, into the uh, cache, is greater than the self dot second still expiry. Then what we could do is return the um, or it's less than it. Sorry. Then what we, then what we could do is just return the um, the actual value because remember it's the first thing on the list. So then, else what we want to do is we want to return this and then delete it. That's not what we want to do. We just want to delete it because after a return, it just gets the function to stop. So we want to um, just delete self.cache uh, dot, not dot, self.cache key. Or we're just going to return 
none. I don't want to return an error for this. Um, it's totally fine if we did want to, but it's just for something like this, we don't actually have to return an error. Um, it's not an issue to return an error, but just for this one, I'll just have it be the um, none type. So in our cleanup function, we just need self. And so this will always be going on. So we want a while true. I'll capitalize on the wrong letter. So while true. And then we want to dot uh, sleep for our interval. Right? Because it's, remember, it's going to be called right away. So we immediately need to sleep. So that way we just, um, so that way we don't just delete the thing that we just put in there. So now our current time is time dot time. And then keys to delete is going to be a list of keys. So we're going to say key um, for, and then we're going to need to put this in parentheses. And we're not going to have to do this. Key for key. And then we're going to say whatever, and then the timestamp that we would have in the um, in the cache right there. We say in self dot cache, not that self dot cache dot items because it's a dictionary. And then what we can do is we can say if current time is greater than or equal to self dot self dot um, if current time minus the timestamp. So how so it's lifetime for being in the in the cache. Is greater than or equal to um, self dot seconds till expire, and then after we get the keys to delete, so we're gonna say for key in keys to delete, and we're just gonna say del, and we're gonna just delete um, self dot cache key for that whole loop, and then it'll go back up, and then sleep through the next interval, and then check again. So that's the whole object right there. Um, I'm such a nerd for stuff like this. Such a nerd. I think that um, taking something as simple as a dictionary and then abstracting it like just enough so that way it is still like something that you wrote. You're not just using a wrapper on something that's like useless. Um, it's just is now it's a new thing. Now it has a now it, we have a new feature on top of a solid foundation, right? We're just kind of adding a few bells and whistles to a dictionary, but they're contextual to what we actually need. Let's say you have to, let's say this second still expire, it was really like 1440, right? It was like seven hours because each time you would have to request something like this, it would take you forever. And then the, um, it was just, you didn't have to do it that frequently, whatever it would be. This would be a perfect use case for it. And there are things like LRU cache. You could just use that, but let's make our own, right? Let's have some fun. Let's get a little creative with it. Because we also want to have our use case to stay efficient, we want to have this um, the second still expiry. So we're going to say for, well, we're going to go into our get stock data function. And I have some code already in here to um, measure the time for everything. So whenever we try to request data, we're going to get this information. Uh, in later videos, we won't have this print, but just for this one, so that way we can see exactly what's going on, exactly how much faster a cache hit really is. So we're going to check for a cache hit first. So we're going to say cached data is, and we're going to await, well, we get the cache in the function declaration too, right? So it'll be down here. Uh, yep, yeah, there's our cache that we declare in our main. Await cache dot, um, what I call the function get value, get key value, get key value. That's not what I actually named it in the GitHub. I just called it get value from key because that's actually what's going on. I'm not getting back the key value pair. I'm getting back just the value. Get value from key, and we're gonna say ticker. So then, and we should also say, um, in this we're just doing daily. Right, we're not specifying the resolution, but if you were to have a use case where you would need to request different um, resolutions, you would have to say like, you would have to do something like 
cash key gets, and then you would have to say like um, ticker, and then whatever resolution you were looking at. Um, we don't have that use case, but if you ever wanted to modify like that, that was that would be how you would have to do that. So then, if cash data is not none, right? Because remember that is our miss, right? That's our miss case to just return none. So then we could just print, I want this to be really um, descriptive. So print cache hit on ticker. Then we could say that the time taken is like that. And then we could just say time taken for ticker um, cache hit is that long. And then we're going to set this to be um, our cache data, right? And so now, and then we also need to continue, right? Because we're in a loop. If this doesn't get, if this is not true, then we're just going to go right into this try block. And then we're going to try to read it from a CSV. And if that doesn't work, then we're going to go right into this exception. And we're actually going to do an API connection and download it all. So yeah, in your main, just make sure that you actually get an object and pass it into the get data function. Or yep. And yeah. Then I'm gonna asynchronously run main. You have to yeah, actually, I'm not sure if I have to main make main async. I don't think I do. Let's see if it throws me an error. I do because yes. Whenever you have an await in a function in Python like this, that function also has to be oh, I just realized it moved my face. Um, that function also has to be async. I like that. I do like it because um, there becomes the issue of am I trying to get something asynchronously in a sync way? That could be fine depending on what it is, but Python is kind of just like don't even try to do that. Don't even shoot yourself in the foot like that. Just everything is going to be the same color. These functions are all going to be colored the same. If you have colored functions is like if you have four functions or two really because my memory is that bad, two functions, purple and blue, and you have one async function, now everything is red, right? If you have two sync functions, purple and blue, and you have one red async function and you use it, now everything's red. That's like how colored functions work. And Python is pretty much like, we're just going to enforce that. In Go, Go's functions are not colored. I don't know any other programming languages off the top of my head that would have something like that but um yeah it's pretty much forcing you to have every single function be the same color so with that being said i also extended the date range so that way you could really see it could really be, just be dramatic so now let's run everything and yeah i'm gonna print it so we're gonna make this huge uh so yeah then we can just run our code and the hair, yeah, and here we get everything. Uh, runtime warning enable trace malloc to get the alloc object allocation trace back. I'm not sure. Coroutine sleep was never awaited. Okay. I bet I have to just say await. No? Uh, let me check this really quickly. I think. I just have to, where do I not have an await? Here, I don't have an await. Maybe yeah, async IO returns a code routine. Yeah, that was an oversight on my end. Async IO dot sleep returns a code routine. So this one up here, create task, it just creates a task. It uh, schedules the execution of a code routine. It doesn't actually uh, returns a task object, but we don't actually have to handle that return. It just does it. Um, AsyncIO.sleep, we actually have to handle that we get return something. So we just have to await it, and we don't have to actually get it and do anything with it, but we do have to await it. So, here we are. No more error now. And so now we can see, uh, yeah. So time taken for triple uh, 3M file read is this long? Time taken for Apple file read is that long? Microsoft file read. 
And then because we actually have a cache on Apple, because we downloaded it before, if we need it again, it's virtually instantaneous because it's in local memory. This could be really dramatic if, like, let me replace this with something that I know I don't have a CSV of. Uh, ARKK, why not? Right, so now, if we were to do it, you can get a nice cup of coffee, right? Do something that you like, there we go. So now, value is never awaited. Cache.set key value. Right. Um, again, just something stupid that I overset. Where am I not waiting it? Async cache dot set key in line 66. Okay, let's take a look. We just need to await that, right? I had it up here. Again, simple little oversight. Always remember if something um, is a coroutine or not. Always remember, like, this is an async function, because, so you have to await it, right? Always remember that that could actually happen. So now let me clear this, my terminal, I mean, and I want to show you guys how uh, bonkers it could really be. So what's another one? Crowd, crowd strike. And so then we're going to put crowd all the way back at the end. So if someone's going to request crowd, they're going to do something with it. They're going to say, I want these tickers instead. And then like, oh, okay, I want to go back to crowd. So now we're going to see what could actually happen. I like that I got to fix those errors uh, live with you guys because things happen. So here we go. Time taken for crowd download, three seconds. Time taken for Apple file read is this long. Microsoft is that long. Cache hit on Apple, virtually instantaneous. Cache hit on crowd, virtually instantaneous. And then here we have all of our data. So we have Crowd, Apple, Microsoft. Well, it's still just a key value pair, right? So we're not going to get like a new. Um, it's not going to return these. It's not going to be unique objects in the dictionary, right? It's still just the same key. So the value is just going to get overwritten. That's why we don't have um, five different things here because the tickers are the same. Like I'm not going to have um, two different key value pairs for Apple when the data is the same. So that's why that's happening. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you guys for this episode. Um, everything in the GitHub, of course, will have this fresh code without any, um, without any errors, without any oversights on what's a coroutine or not. That's probably the biggest thing with Python async that I found to just be annoying is what do I need to await and what do I not need to await? Um, It'll always tell you, <laughs> right? Like it's always just skill issues with that because this, it just clearly tells you returns a coroutine. So that means that you simply have to await it. And if you are calling an async function, that means that you're creating a coroutine. So that means that you have to await it. Um, but yeah, things like that happen. I hope that you guys learned something about async programming. In this, uh, we're going to continue with async stuff with the backtesting engine. So I hope that you guys are excited for that. I know I am. I like making stuff like that a lot. So I get, I'm happy I get to do that on YouTube for you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go modify the GitHub and this will be on the 9th when you watch this. So yeah, we're getting close to Christmas. We're getting close to the end of the series. I hope that you guys are enjoying it so far. I hope that um, if you're really starting at zero, then you're really feeling confident and you really feel like that you made a good decision in following this. And I hope that if you're experienced and you're following this, you're just having a good time, right? But yeah, Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I will see you all in the next one.